Hello and welcome to Amiga Tech, the series in which I take a look at effects I've programmed for the Commodore Amiga line of computers. In today's episode, I've decided to step away from graphics for a change and instead focus on audio. The effect I've programmed this time around is an audio mixer, which allows you to play back several samples onto one Amiga hardware channel. Essentially, this allows you to play back more sounds simultaneously than normal. Now first let's look at the effect in action and then I'll explain how it all works. Playing back more than four channels of audio at the same time is not a new feature for the Amiga. It has been done many times before. There are programs such as Octomet uh, that allowed you to play back eight channel tracks rather than the usual four channel modules. And then there were games such as Turrican and Turrican 2 which had seven channel audio playback during their title screens. However, this was almost never done inside resource intensive applications such as games during gameplay. Right? That didn't happen. And the reason for that is simple. Such mixing routines were very resource intensive. This mixer is slightly different. It has some compromises built in, some choices made that make it much faster than these kind of mixing routines usually are. Again, this isn't rocket science, but it's generally not done. The perception seems to be that the audio quality would be far too low or alternatively that the well um, resource usage as in the mixers time cost in CPU cycles would be so high that it wouldn't be worthwhile. I'm hoping to show that this isn't the case. The mixer I programmed uses only about 5% maybe 6% of a total PAL frame to do its mixing per frame meaning that you've got 95% of your resources left to do other things and I think that that might be a useful compromise. But in order to make that choice we do need to know what the compromise actually entails and what the actual quality is. Just now I showed you everything mixed together right a module playing back and the samples it may have been hard to hear the actual quality so let's look at what kind of quality you can expect from the samples individually now. And after that, I'll explain a bit about how the mixer works. First, let's listen to the individual samples for the standard mixing mode with the division preprocessor. Now, let's listen to the same samples, but now using the compress preprocessor. And lastly, let's listen to the samples as they are for the high quality mixing mode. That is to say, the original samples are stored on the disk without any pre-processing. Now that we've listened to the individual samples, it might be a good idea to know what they sound like when mixed together. So we're going to listen to all of these samples mixed together using the various mixing modes. So how do I actually mix things together? Well, as you've seen, there's two types of mixers, the standard mixer and the high quality mixer. The difference is what happens when samples exceed their maximum values. The standard mixer doesn't do anything. It just plays back the result of the additions it makes, regardless of the resulting number. That means that if you mix two loud samples together, it will sound very bad because the number that results won't fit inside of 8 bits, overflow and cause it to do all sorts of bad things. It really won't sound well. To fix this, the standard mixer uses pre-processed samples. These samples are either compressed or divided. That is in the computer program that I wrote. 
It is possible to do this differently, but you'd have to do it outside of the program. That may actually be the better choice, as the routines I've used to pre-process the samples are fairly rudimentary, and maybe you can do better with an audio editing suite. But let's look at exactly what I do. It's rather simple. I add sample values together in the standard mixer. And the preprocessors I've used are either divide or compress, like I said. Now divide does basically what it says on the tin. You take the sample values that you have in the sample data and you divide it by the number of channels that you want to mix on. So if you set up the mixer for three channels and you have a sample that has data points like 100, 64, minus 12, you divide all these values by three, store them and use that as your sample source for mixing. The problem is that makes the samples a lot quieter. It works and it distorts. The distortion is rather limited, but it is very quiet. So I came up with an alternative, which I call compress. It's a bit of a misnomer. It's actually more of a limiter. What that does, it is, it is saying, look, you want to mix samples for free channels. That means that if I want to add three samples together, it must fit inside the 8-bit limit. So I'll pre-process that by scanning through the sample data that you provided. And if I find a value that exceeds the positive or negative amplitude maximum that you'd get, if you take the maximum value and divide it by the number of channels, I'll lower it to fit exactly that limit. That effectively limits or compresses the samples to that level which has a different kind of distortion than the division. It's much louder what you get, as you could have heard in the um, example I uh, showcased just earlier, but on the other hand, it does distort more. And which is best is a matter of preference. If you have a lot of samples that are very loud, compress as an algorithm isn't going to work very well. If on the other hand your samples only rarely peak, then it is the better option. Try it out, see what works. But there's another mixing routine I've made, and that is the high quality mixer, which ironically distorts more than the standard mixer. You see, the standard mixer just adds values together and that's it. However, the high quality mixer doesn't do that. The high quality mixer basically says, well, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna add these numbers together as if there is no 8-bit limit i.e. we are skipping into 16-bit math, we'll just add together and if we then find that the sample value that we get as a result is lower than what would be the maximum for 8-bit, we play it back as is. If it however is higher, we then limit it to the exact maximums of 8-bit and progress the error forward using error feedback rounding to make use of the data we still have. Now, error feedback rounding is a complicated topic from the DSP world, and I'm not going to explain it or going to go into it much. Suffice to say, it wasn't my idea. I found it on the English Amiga board, and I just decided to implement it. And it works really well. Problem is, it is much more resource intensive. On an A500, it takes over 15% of a frame to do free channel mixing this way. However, on an A1200, that number drops to just over 6.5%, if I recall correctly. It might be 7, but something on that order, and that is much more feasible. There is, of course, the elephant in the room. This algorithm, like the compress algorithm for the preprocessor of the standard uh, mixing method, actually distorts the audio. So if you mix a large amount of loud sounds together, you're gonna hear that. Overall though, I've been rather impressed with how it sounds. At this point I need to add something. When I was recording the video I forgot to mention the other really big reason that this mixer runs fast. And that is it runs at a fixed sampling rate. That means that all the samples will always play back at 11 kilohertz. No matter what. If you want multiple pitches, you will need to supply multiple different samples recorded at different pitches. This really speeds up the mixing process and is the key factor in making it as fast as it is. However, if you do not like 11 kHz as a sampling rate, have no fear. This is easily configurable in the source code. Now, I hope 
but this shows that you can in fact achieve real-time audio mixing in games. Meaning that there is no reason for your Amiga program, if you're making one now, your Amiga game, to only feature four-channel playback. There are compromises, the audio quality does suffer somewhat, but I truly believe that this is a far more reasonable compromise than many of the ones we've seen before. Now I could go on at length about all sorts of other aspects such as the performance metrics of more or less channels being mixed or higher or lower frequencies and how it works in more detail but I don't have to because I wrote an article on my website which goes into quite a bit of detail about this program, the algorithms used. It, it has uh, much more in-depth information than I could fit in this video. So if you're interested, check that out. The link is in the description below. Also on my website is the program and all of the source code, so if you want to use this yourself, either just to see how it goes or actually implement it in your game or demo, go right ahead, it's there for use. Uh, it's the whole idea, I make these things, it's, it's for, to hopefully do something useful for the Amiga community, so be my guest. And uh, with that all there is really left to say is thank you very much for watching, if you liked this video or this program, please like and subscribe. It motivates me to keep making more of these. And uh, well, hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.